Hare Krishna and welcome everyone. So many places today they are celebrating Mother's Day all over the world, different places. So if we see the life, the way it has been, <clears throat> especially in the West, but also in all parts of the world, including India, the life has become so different, busy, that people don't get a chance to really take time to appreciate and express gratitude. Everybody is able to hear me, right? Yes, Prabhuji. Yes, Prabhuji. So everybody is so busy in their own lives. We don't have time to really think, appreciate, and uh, express our gratitude. For someone who practically we were cared by even before we were born, even anybody else who can take care of us is only after birth, right? But the mother takes care of the child nine months even before birth. And <clears throat> many times we don't really take time to express our gratitude enough to our mothers. Yes. And what we do is we take it for granted. We take the relationship for granted. Uh, we talk about the Supreme Lord that he was with us all the time in the past. All the time in the past and he will be with us all the time in the future. He's someone who, uh, whom we have always, always, uh, who has always provided everything for us. But we neglect the Supreme Lord the most, even though we know Paramatma is in the heart, but we neglect. Similarly, the other person <clears throat> is mother who so after God has been with us so long, but we neglect, we take for granted. And even if we have some uh, things where somebody may misunderstand us, it is very, very unlikely that the mother will give up the child because of the misunderstanding, right? This kind of a love is natural and essential, Prabhupada writes in the book. Natural means this is not just in the human life, which the mother's love is there for child, but even for animals. We see there is so much love they have for their child. So <clears throat> this is the way the uh, preservation of the species is happening. And it is very, very important to take time to express our gratitude and love practically every day. Uh, but because of the busy life and schedule, we can't you know, uh, properly do it every day. So at least one exclusive day is there when we can do this. In scriptures, <clears throat> Prabhupada writes, that in the Bhagavad Gita purport only, that there are seven mothers according to the Vedic scriptures. Seven mothers. Anybody knows who are the seven mothers? Yes. Yeah, who are the seven mothers? Who will tell? Who are the seven mothers? Birth mother. Okay. Oh, that is most important, the one okay. who gives birth to us. Right. Mother Earth. Guru's okay, wife. Guru's wife. So that is second. Mother, Mother Earth. Earth, third. Oh. How? Gaumata. Nurse. Yeah, nurse. What is the meaning of a nurse? Dharti. Uh, um, uh, who feeds. Feeds. Right? Who feeds, takes care like that. Okay. Nurse. Uh, wife of the king. Wife of king. Guru Guru Patni. Brahmani. Wife of Brahmani. Brahman oh, okay. Yes. So all these are mothers. 
and in the scriptures shrimad bhagavatam and uh, you know itihasas so many examples of mothers are there in fact that mother's love of for the child is sometimes used to describe the relationship of the jiva with the lord that there is no other love which can come close to the love of god except this love which can give you a little hint that a mother's love for child is unmotivated uninterrupted uninterrupted selfless and constant always and it is never ends so this is <clears throat> the mother's love for child uh of course both father and mother they teach the child different uh, aspects uh, and essentially having the presence of both father and mother is very very important because sometimes mother's love for the child uh becomes uh, in one way an obstacle for them for advancement like in the past children were sent to gurukuls why because they need some austerity they need to do some tapasya they need to have some training and sometimes at home living with mothers they may not get enough of that they may be too pampered so therefore the strictness and the schedule was there and the same thing with father the father can do that with detachment uh while mother may not so this is how scientific nice and beautiful the vedic culture is so in the scriptures we see the examples of so many mothers we see the example of uh of course mother yashoda and we see how krishna who is the supreme lord even wants to have that relationship with his devotee of having a mother and therefore he has yashoda mai devki mai he has those devotees who are loving krishna in the mood of parents then we see examples of mothers who are <coughs> uh recently we were discussing this talking comparing the example of kekai kekai is a mother wanted to good, do good for the child wanted to really uh show her affection and love to bharat but what did what did she do what did kekai do for showing her love for bharat can anybody tell you read ramayan right you can you tell what did kekai do um, she sent lord ram to the forest and made bharat the king okay was it a good thing no no why because everybody loved lord ram and bharat loved him too so i was just making bharat sadder yeah see so beautiful answer now okay. yeah excellent so she was doing something for her son without understanding what is the right thing to do and what the son will be happy with so this is very important that because of our affection for our child we do not neglect what is in the real benefit of the child just not what i feel is beneficial for the child but what is actually beneficial for the child what is actually going to help him please him may be happy and also is material and spiritual benefit for future so this is something which is a classic example of how sometime <clears throat> just love and affection may not necessarily lead to a desired result very very important that it is done with lot of maturity done with lot of understanding of the scriptures and with loving devotion to krishna in that mood when we do something then that is perfect for example there so many example comes example is 
mother um, of Dhruv Maharaj. Dhruva came to her. How many of you do not know the story of Dhruva Maharaj? Anybody who doesn't know the story of Dhruva Maharaj? Neela Vanti's hand is raised. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And do you want to share something? No, it's not. Okay. Uh, oh, that's not hand. That's, I think, the cursor. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, everybody knows Dhruva Maharaj's story, right? Yes? No? Is there anybody there? Mm -hmm. I think nobody is there. Oh, Prabhuji, we are listening. <laughs> but He knows, Prabhuji. Okay. Okay, somebody is still away. Okay. So, Dhruv Maharaj, he has a crisis situation. Now, for us, we think, are a crisis, what crisis? You know, just got a little scolding, what is there? But when that particular person is that in that situation, that situation becomes the biggest crisis. Like if we see our situation, sometimes even a small thing comes and we feel like so much anxiety and worry. And that small thing, in the big scheme of things, after 10 years, you may laugh on it or smile on it. That, oh, I did like this. But at that time, it becomes a big problem. So <clears throat> Dhruv Maharaj, he was under so much, um, it was practically like a vacuum was created for love. He didn't feel the affection of his father and he was getting chastised by her, his stepmother. So he took shelter of his own mother. Again, you know, anybody reject you, mother still is there. So he went to his mother and he <clears throat> asked his mother, what should I do? So mother didn't think, she, how did she do this to my son? I'll go and take revenge. She didn't do like that. Hmm. Neither she plots some you know, schemes. Okay, some politics I will do, put poison in her food. No, she used it to promote Dhruv Maharaj, encourage Dhruv Maharaj to know about God. He said, only God can help you. Only Lord Vishnu can help you. And where will I find? I've heard the sages go to the forest. Okay. So then Dhruva Maharaj said, okay, I'll go to the forest. She didn't think he's going to go. And <clears throat> it wasn't uh, something which was normal even in those days to have five-year boys go to the forest and do <laughs> the first time chanting yeah. and meditation. So... <clears throat> So then he met Narad Muni. And because he was given this advice, recommendation, suggestion about God by the mother, that changed his life. And at the time when he was going back to Godhead, he said, no, first my mother should go. So this is the <clears throat> duty of a parent or mother. Even in the scriptures, we see the example of Mother Kunti, right? who did so many things right for their uh, children, all five Pandavas. She was widow at an early age. She had to go undergo so many problems. But she was very, very learned in scriptures knowledge. In fact, the prayers of Mother Kunti, which we read in the Bhagavatam first canto, we really don't... Uh, <clears throat> um, you can't imagine how knowledgeable Mother Kunti is. How much knowledge scriptures she has and she is writing all this in the full realization of love of God. So this is like an, as a symptom of a Mahabhagwa devotee, a topmost devotee. So that is how Mother Kunti is. And when it came to a situation, she knew her children very well. And like I was discussing the other day, that when Mother Kunti was living in Ek Chakra, and in Ek Chakra, the uh, family said, oh, we have to take our uh, one of our family member and send him to Bakasur, who's a demon. And then Bakasur will eat all the food and he'll eat that person also who brings the food. 
So then they, <clears throat> Kunti Maharani said, don't send many of your family member. We've been living with you. It is our duty and responsibility. So my son will go. So then they were like, no, 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 no. That will be a big thing. You Like you came to us as guests. That will be a big offense that we let you go. We should go. We have to go. Said, no, no, no. At that time, she didn't say, Mother Kunti didn't say, I will go. She could have said, some sentimentalist people, they could have believed like that. No, no, no. Why should I send? No, she knew her the nature of her son. She knew the responsibility. She knew the duty. She knew, knew her, his capabilities. So this is also the duty of parents, especially mother, you know, to see what are the things in the child. And Bhima was so happy with that proposal. That yes. So we can see somebody may say, Kekai did a better thing because she really thought of her son becoming a king. And Kunti, she was so cruel, sent her son to the demon, right? Somebody may feel like that, but actually it is the other way around. Kekai is the one who did a big mistake and Kunti is the one who made the right decision because that decision helped the family, gave Bhatka for the right destination and really helped Bhima uh, in getting a lot of fun. So this is the <clears throat> way uh, Krishna conscious mother act. So therefore, being a mother is a big responsibility and being a child, son is also a big responsibility or a daughter. And <clears throat> properly expressing our gratitude to our parents is very, very important. Even if sometimes, you know, we may not be able to uh, do so in a proper way, we have to try to really introspect and rectify. And if we can properly follow the teachings of Krishna consciousness, then we can really try to repay all. We can actually never repay what they have done for us. But we can try to express our gratitude because putra word means one who who will tell. Is able to deliver the putra. Putra. What is the meaning of mantra? Mantra or mantra, Prabhuji? Mantra. Mantra. What is the meaning of mantra? Man ko taare wala. Krishna man. Humanity trayate. Yes. Mantra. Correct. The one who delivers us from the mind. Because we are always captured, trapped uh, by the mind. So one who really <laughs> they will, delivers us means takes us out from the trap of the mind. That is mantra. So Leputra means there is there are hellish planet where yeah. we can go. Right? So from those planets we can be saved if the putra, if the child is Krishna conscious. If the child is Krishna conscious, and devotee, then the parents get the benefit. Whatever the children do, do, the parents also get the benefit of it. For example, Yudhishthira Maharaj was asking Narad Muni, where is my father after the death of his father? So he said he has got stuck in one of the planets. He is not able to advance further journey. So you do the Rajasuya Yagya. So he did the Rajasuya Yagya, which benefited his father. So like that, when children become Krishna conscious, that actually helps the whole family, the parents as well, mother as well. So that is very, very important. In the scriptures, there's so many examples where we can see this mother's love for the child and how different mothers have acted. Uh, for example, Mother Uttara, whose son was? Who's, who, who's the son of Uttara? Parikshit Maharaj. So Parikshit Maharaj was in the womb and Brahmastra was released by who threw the Brahmastra? To... Ashwatthama. Yes, Ashwatthama threw the Brahmastra. Changed the direction. Yes, so 
He threw the Brahmastra and that was going to switch Uttarayan to Krishna, right? For help. And Krishna protested. So this is how we see in scriptures that every mother is very, very having a lot of love for the child. But how they channelize the love and if they're a devotee, they will actually do in Krishna consciousness. Otherwise, they may, miss, may land up making mistake like Kekai. So these were few things I wanted to share today on Mother's Day. Uh, I would like to hear from all the other devotees to share on this very, very um, nice day. It's a good opportunity to thank our mothers, thank our mothers, and pray for them and express our gratitude. So, who would like to share next? I think Nirvi Prabhu was yesterday sharing a few things. You're like listening, right? Nirvi Prabhu will share. Hare Krishna. I, um, I, I do not know much, but um, yeah. Um, Regarding sharing, you know, I think um, all I've realized from as other people were saying is, um, you know, mother's love is um, is what we what is closest to the love of for Godhead. And if uh, we love Krishna, then we can get the same benefit. And um, um, if we love Krishna, then 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 um, our love for if the, the pure love for Krishna is closest to the love for the mother, because mother also takes care of the child completely, un, um, in an unmotivated fashion for herself, unselfish fashion. It's a completely selfless love, and um, whatever happens, uh, you know, one person is always on our side, and that is uh, our mother is always on our side. So, so that is the most unconditional love, whatever be the situation, whatever be um, the difficulty, you know, we can always have faith that, um, that mother is always going to be there. And, you know, we see that um, how all mothers, they take care of their children so selflessly. Um, they... Um, you know, fathers can sometimes be more harsher, but mothers are typically, they want the best, and uh, and that is what is seen. Um, so, uh, yeah, that's all I had to say. I didn't want to share much. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, thank you, Prabhu. Um, Hare Krishna, happy Mother's Day to all the, all the mothers out there. I don't have too much. I'll just share a couple of things I can think of. Um, so I feel that you know, out of all the jobs, the mother's job is the hardest. Um, we always, uh, uh, you know, compliment or commend women on uh, achieving so much. Um, oh, somebody can become a scientist or a you know, uh, get, uh, you know, these uh, big uh, jobs, corporate jobs, or um, go to the outer space, all these things, but it still seems, uh, uh, at least for me, <laughs> uh, managing your kid is the hardest job, uh, giving them the right, uh, you know, discipline and, uh, you know, balance of love uh, and discipline both. That's, uh, uh, that's probably the hardest thing to do. Uh, but at the same time, you know, this, um, uh, especially coming into Krishna consciousness, reading the scriptures, uh, we, and we see so many examples of these mothers that have had to make uh, hard choices in their lives. Um, um, and, you know, um, Radha Rani is our, is a basically an inter, is the internal potency of Krishna. She is the She's our mother. She's everybody's mother. She is the pleasure-giving potency. She gives pleasure um, to all of us and to Krishna. 
and we keep uh, you know that's why we keep praying to radharani to get us the mercy of krishna and, uh, every child you know when they go away from home the home still feels where the mother is so wherever the mother is you want to come back and sit there sit in their lap and that feels the most comfortable space and that's what krishna keeps saying that come back to me come back to godhead because that's where his um come back into the into the shelter of internal potency which is radharani take the shelter not of the uh, not of the uh, anything that contaminates you but the one that comforts you the one that is sachidanand the one that's original internal potency part and parcel of krishna which is radharani so uh, i think today we have to try and take more and more shelter of radharani um the pleasure giving potency which will give us pleasure and we will be able to Uh, give both that pleasure and discipline to our kids uh, hopefully um but that's all i wanted to share would anyone else like to share um kiran aunty would you like to share aunty has a special position of grandma so she is uh, and uh, double mother double mother and mom here also you know mm-hmm. that's uh, that's a different kind of mothering altogether which is uh, beyond even the <laughs> beyond even the mother can do so they have a exceptionally higher position so please uh, kiran aunty mom say some words um anisha mata ji if you like to say something anita mata ji is there raksha mata ji please share any uh, rakshita mata ji so today we'll have kahoot quiz on mothers day so everybody can join <laughs> kahoot quiz <laughs> krishna conscious mothers day kahoot quiz okay all right so i think we will conclude for now uh, the bhagavatam class and we'll go to the next session shivan bhagavatam ki jai kripaad ki jai so every single day we are hearing some or the other news one person is sick then another person is sick then someone has left his body another person has left his body it is all negativity everywhere we are people are so fearful and rightly so because you don't know it's so much uncertainty next moment so it's very nice to hear from mata ji she is very very amazing excellent speaker so everybody is requested to join in case you are not able to log in on the zoom uh, make sure you are on the youtube or the facebook so it will be a live lecture so please join that overcoming fear